In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. I really had another subject on my mind today. And then I read Romans 7 and remembered how it had been a favorite passage, not only to me, but my gosh, it really sounds like Memphis and Shelby County politicians. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And I said, yeah, but it gets them elected. <clears throat> now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. Is that passing the buck? For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. But I do not do the good I want. But the evil I do not want is what I do. You remember the devil made me do it? <laughs> now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. I said it's failure to take proper credit. So <clears throat> I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, Evil lies close at hand, like next door neighbor, a person over there, opponent in the race, Adam and Eve. But I see in my members, that's part of the members, another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. <clears throat> Wretched man that I am, says Paul, who will rescue me from this body of death? The voters? Will I be able to continue doing what I do not want to do, but do anyway, because there is something bad within me that I, that I cannot control? <clears throat> Paul says, I am a slave one way or the other, to the law of God by choice, to the law of sin, because I am human. Well, I cannot figure out if this is a plea for votes or a cry that the speaker is out of control and doesn't want to take the blames for his or her errors. <clears throat> it is that eternal war between flesh and soul, with flesh the victor. And I say, we need to man up all over ourselves and do what Jesus would have done. For those of you who saw the Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> then as if having cut and paste as a follow-up for this complaint by Paul, we hear Matthew 11. Can't you just hear God tossing this around in heaven? To what can we compare this generation? He sounds exa exa as exasperated as I do. They don't follow rules. They don't dance at the flute or wail at funerals. They wield glocks and jam on the sidewalks. They prefer to judge others, even though most of the time they don't acknowledge the truth about themselves. Kids think they deserve what they want and are entitled to have it. And I guess they did when Jesus lived as well. Matthew said, the innocent son of man came eating and drinking, and he was charged with being a drunkard and a glutton. And he was cursed for being friends of the tax, collect tax collectors and sinners. And yet, Jesus was trying to convince the powerful and the intellectual and the wealthy and the kings of religiosity that every man or woman, rich or poor, precise or sloppy, filled with faith or atheistic, is reasonable somewhere, is worth something. A glass of wine does not a drunkard make. A dinner with the homeless or a criminal does not a criminal make. But in contemporary culture, this is a sad truth. Children who are open and loving by nature cannot freely trust adults, sometimes not even their own parents. How do you raise a child to be congenial and polite and curious and to be in constant defense of himself against the unknown so anxious to hurt him? If you don't believe me, sit in on some of our hundreds of foster care reviews where we see the horrors adults perpetrate on innocent children, like chaining that child to, uh, who had already been damaged by abandoned parents to in a cage, right here in our own neighborhoods. So today in this time when so many freaks think I do what I don't want to do because I cannot control the sinful desires within me, 
Jesus opened his arms for all to come to him, all of us who are weary with heavy burdens, and he will save us. He will take away the worry and the fear. He is gentle and humble of heart. But can we, once we leave the pews of this church where we feel safe, trust anybody else? My gosh, for centuries, children and families trusted Catholic priests and holy men, and look what happened there. Our police officers trusted the city government, and many of them have lost everything because their savings were spent by the city and nothing is left, not insurance or pension. Our elected officials, who often dress well and put on a good show, are not whom they pretend to be, nor do they live where they're supposed to. Our heroes, well, where are our heroes? Where are the good men and women who are role models for our youth? At the movies? On the basketball court? Hip hop and on a st stage? Those of us who believe in the power of love and forgiving and the forgiving God must continue to build trust through prayer. And we need more and more to make prayer our best friend day and night. It's amazing how prayer in a moment can stop us from doing that thing we know we shouldn't do, but we do because we can't stop doing it, blaming it on our sinful nature, our dark side, our uncontrollable urges, or our ADHD, I guess. In foster care, every single child who comes into custody is diagnosed with ADHD. It's ridiculous. It's an excuse to drug children so facilities can keep them in control. And they have no idea what side effects Adderall, Abilify, Trizodone, and Seroquel will all, all given to the same child will have on his future. Whatever happened to parental discipline and patience? Well, maybe I can segue into what I really wanted to say today about light. One thing I miss in our local worship is lighting candles for those in trouble, for those sick, for those leaving for a new adventure, for ourselves when we have a dilemma or about to do something that we shouldn't do and don't have the power to stop our sinful nature. Light a candle. Say a prayer. Let our little light shine. Lighting is, a candle is a way of prayer and worship that shows up in every religion in this world. Latin America, where most faith has the Catholic bent, lighting a candle is always a comfort. Some people have altars in their homes to honor certain virgins which have appeared over the years in times of desperation. Virgin uh, uh, de Trenti Tres in Uruguay, Virgin of Guadalupe in Mexico, Virgin of Lourdes in France, the Virgin of Walsingham in England, or they honor burial anniversaries with saints like Mother Teresa. And we ask them to intercede and to carry out our needy prayers before the Lord. So we light a candle to thank them on their holy days, or every day for that matter. Others ask for help with a problem in the family or worry about friends or with disappointments in our own lives. In Thailand, or Tibet, or Bhutan, or India, or Jerusalem, or Dubai, or Moscow, lighting a candle is part of daily ritual before anyone steps out to work. The Buddhists, the Hindus, the Taoists, the Taoists, the Shintoists, the Catholics, the Orthodox, the Muslims, the Jewish, all have a tradition of lighting a candle in prayer. I lit candles all along the trail going to Mount Everest, and when circumnavigating Mount Kailash in Tibet, Show me a temple or a Tory gate to walk through and I'm in line lighting a candle, even the smelly butter candles. Pilgrimages are auspicious prayer times since the pilgrim is usually traveling an excruciating path to receive cleansing and forgiveness. Lighting candles becomes the energy boost in that ritual and lighting the candle is asking God to pay attention to your cry or another's salvation and healing in angst. I would like to be able to light a candle for my mother, who died two years ago. When she is on my mind, or I, I just want to speak with her, I would like to have the delight of remembering her by lighting a candle in church, the holy place. And I believe she knows where I am. It would be only between mom and me and Jesus who takes care of her now. 
I want to light a candle for my grandchildren when they go off to college or to some remote challenge, a symbol of asking God to protect them. I want to light a candle before I go to the cancer doctor or when my friend has been rushed to the hospital. We certainly need to light candles for our police officers and firemen who are in terrible life crisis today. And hey, lighting a candle for your horse or dog or cat is not unheard of. So for this reason, with the help of Dave, <clears throat> David Lusk, we have set up a little area where we at Calvary can light candles for our needs and for those we love. It plants a special kind of peace in the soul. Christ is the light of this world, and we can connect to him through lighting prayer candles. And maybe it'll stop us from doing that fleshy thing that we know we shouldn't do but we can't stop doing because the devil is making us do it and we just can't stop it with our weak minds and without imploring god for help may father god bless you all and i'm going to go light a can up candle for my mother